You've seen the unit circle lots of places, maybe your textbook and image searches, but if you need to create it yourself, how do you do that? So I'm gonna show you a nice way to recreate it without having to memorize too many things. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the values and they follow this pattern, 0 fourths, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, and 4 fourths. Pretty easy to remember. You just have to square root them all. So I'm going to reduce all these down. First one is square root of 0, which is 0. Square root of 1 fourth is square root of 1 over square root of 4, which is 1 half. Square root 2 over 4, you could reduce this to square root 1 half and you can reduce it again to one over square root two. You're gonna see a lot of people rationalize the denominator, which I think is a massive waste of time, but if you wanna spend your time doing that, you'll get square root two over two. Square root three over four is square root three over square root four, which is two. And this one, last one, four fourths is one, so square root of one, which is just one. These are the five values that you'll see on the unit circle. So now we're gonna draw a big circle. That's a nice oval. Perfect. All right, how do we remember the angles? The key is to think about them in twelfths. So normally you'd write this pi over two at the top, uh, but instead of pi over two, I'm gonna think about it as six pi over 12. And that means there's gonna be six pieces here I'm gonna break this into. So let's see, maybe one in the middle, like that. And I'm not going to draw the first and last mark here. Now the first one, I will write it in. The first one will be pi over 12. Uh, actually, I lied. I'm not going to write it there. It's going to get very crowded. The first one's pi over 12. The next one's 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, and 6 pi over 12. Reduce all the ones you can. You can't reduce 1 pi over 12. I guess I should put 0 pi over 12 too. Uh, so that's 0. 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6. That one's familiar. 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4. That's familiar. 4 pi over 12. It's 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. 5 pi over 12 does not reduce. 6 pi over 12 is pi over 2. These five angles are the angles you need in the unit circle. And again, we're skipping those two. But that's where all the rest of the angles come from. So you could write the zero angle here. Pi over 6. Let's see if I can write this clearly. Pi over 6 pi over 4, pi over 3, and of course pi over 2. All right, now the values. The easy ones, I call these the corner points. So this is the unit circle, radius 1. So this is 1 for the x, 0 for the y. Top of the unit circle is 0 for the x, 1 for the y. And now we're going to use those values we wrote down earlier. I'm going to circle the simplified versions. Feel free to use square root 2 over 2 if you must. You're wasting your time, but it's your time. Spend it as you wish. We're going to fill in these three values. Now, if you think about the x-coordinate, the x-coordinate starts at 1 and goes to 0, so it gets smaller. And if you look up here, starts at 1, ends at 0, and gets smaller. These are the x-coordinates we need to use. The x-coordinates start at 1 at the bottom. The second one, square root 3 over 2. Then 1 over square root 2. Then 1 over 2. And then, of course, 0 at the top. Those are the x-coordinates. Now, how do we do the y-coordinates? The x-coordinates went up. The y-coordinates go down. So the first y coordinate is 0. The next one's 1 half. Uh, 1 over square root 2. Square root 3 over 2. And then, of course, you're back at 1. 
Okay, so we have our unit circle here. This is only the first quadrant. Let's do the rest of the quadrants. You can split each into six pieces like I did with five hash marks, or you can just kind of shortcut and just do, you don't need to write in that one if you don't want to. I just did it so that you see how the spacing works. I'll just leave this in there. Do the same thing here. Uh, the way I'm splitting it, I'm cutting it in half first, and then I'm cutting it into each half into thirds. Cut in half, cut the half into thirds, to thirds. All right. Now, if you have a ruler and some way to draw a circle, you can make this look very pretty. I'm trying to do this quickly. All right, now for the values. All the values are gonna be repeated. We just have to be clever about what they are. Whoa, don't put that dot on, skip. One, two, three, skip. Bottom, one, two, three. All right, so here we go. This gets the idea of reference angles. This point is just like that point, except what's the difference? The x coordinates are negative. So we have negative one half, comma, the original y value, square root three over two. Next up, this is the one over square root two, one over square root two, but x coordinate is negative. Next up, square root three over two, one half, but now we're negative square root three over two, one half. And of course this point you probably knew before, oh, not zero, come on, negative one for x, zero for y. Okay, so we have the upper half. How do we get the lower half? We're gonna copy all the points from the top except we're gonna make all their y coordinates negative for the bottom. So I'll start here. So I'm looking here and I'm just making my y coordinate negative. Negative square root three over two, one half. Negative one over square root two, negative one over square root two. And last, let's see, we're at that point, negative one half negative square root three over two, and at the very bottom, we have zero for x, negative one for y. Now for these three points, we're just copying values here, just taking the uh, y coordinates, making them negative. Let's see if I have these remembered. Positive one half, because remember, quadrant four, x is positive, negative y, negative square root three over two, one over square root two is positive, negative one over square root two, and last up, we have square root three over two comma uh, negative one half. All right, so that's all the values you need on your unit circle. Let's deal with the rest of the angles. So how do we think about these? Uh, there's a few ways to do it. Uh, if you put everything into twelfths like I did before, this would be super easy. Everybody's a superhero with fractions when you have common denominators. Now, if you don't have common denominators, that's okay. This is pi over three, and there's a pi over six, pi over six, so it's another pi over three, also known as two pi over three. These, I always call these the quarter angles here because they're uh, halfway between uh, the quadrants here. And so this one will be three pi over four. Let's go ahead and fill in all the quarters five pi over four. You're wondering well, where's four pi over four? Well, it's this one right here, also known as one pi. Five pi over four, seven pi over four. Right there, okay. So two pi over three. All right, what about this angle? Well, it's the same as that one, except this is pi over six. So it's pi over six less than pi, also known as five pi over six. Next up right here, that is six pi over six plus one is seven pi over six. And next one, we're gonna go with pi over three. So it will be, let's see, two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three. Uh, three pi over two. 
and five pi over three. It's another pi over three past the four pi over three. And last up, we're almost at two pi. It's just pi over six less than two pi. So that'll be 11 pi over six. All right, unit circle complete. And you do need to memorize a few things, but just write your angles in twelfths. And the numbers I started with are right here. They're all just zero fourths through four fourths, and you square root them and reduce. And you have your entire unit circle. You could reproduce it for your quiz test or just for fun to show off anything you want to do. And remember, do not rationalize unless you were forced to.